Okay there, greetings everybody and welcome here to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So here we are. It's Monday night's look back at a classic rock album. The album I've chose for this week, Rush, Permanent Waves. This was my introduction as an owner of a Rush album. I have actually listened to a couple tracks from A Farewell to Kings on a, on a rock radio musical show on, on television in 1977. That was my first encounter with them. And then I took out the Fly By Night album from the library in the beach area, in the beaches area of Toronto. It's actually called The Beach, and all. some people like to call it The Beaches, but the people that live there think of it as The Beach. So, because it's one beach, it's not a bunch of them. <laughs> I get it. Uh, I, having lived there, I, I know what's going on. But also, um, I took out the Fly By Night album from the, rec, uh, from the library. They used to, in that time period, they used to have, uh, maybe they still do, have rock albums available to take out vinyl albums to take out to listen to and so I had nothing to do one day and I went in there and I saw oh there's that band Rush I seen that I'd had not the best of uh, feelings about but I took it out anyways because my friend was howling at me to get into these guys so sorry I'm a hand shaking today I'm not sure why <laughs> anyway so I took out that album um, I'm just gonna put this down for a few minutes I took out that album and listened to it for three weeks. And I I actually kind of turned a corner a bit with them. At that point, I thought, they're kind of weird. They're, they're kind of different. The music is a little bit off, not what I'm used to. But I did like a couple tracks on that album. So then, you fast forward three years. Yeah, maybe three years. I didn't really listen to them anymore. I had all my Kiss stuff. That's what's what I was listening for. But by mid-78, late 78, I was moving away from Kiss and into other stuff. And in 1980, after Kiss, well, the year before Kiss came out with Dynasty, so now the, uh, so the, see, the cat was out of the bag and I was exploring everywhere. And this was one of, this was the first Rush album I actually purchased, Permanent Waves, and loved it. I absolutely love this album. I couldn't listen to it enough. I loved everything on it, um, except for I didn't really like, uh, for some reason, I didn't really like Jacob's Ladder at first. Uh, I've since grown to love that song as well. So I love all the songs on this album. There, to me, there's no bad songs on this album. In fact, if I was ranking these songs, I would give them all pretty much nines and tens, except for maybe Entree New, which I love, was was one of the first two tracks that I really liked but it never really after that initial month or so of listening to it I never really liked well, actually I, I, I want to make sure I phrase this right I never really listened to that track again it really listened to it in as it being something I wanted to hear um, I did listen to it because with this album I always listen to the entire album when I'm listening to it so anyways having said all that um, that was the beginning of this album for me, which has been my number one favorite Rush album since I got it. Uh, in fact, I've had no other Rush albums be my number one album. This is the only one. It's Under Assault by Hemispheres and Fly By Night and Farewell to Kings. All three albums have taken shots at that, getting that number one spot, but it always holds off. Even Caress of Steel has come up and gotten into this conflict over the years as well but basically this is still number one even though it's I would say it's 75 to 80 percent burned out I don't listen to it much because uh, I'm just burned out on it but I love it it's not it's not an album that has changed in my esteem in any way shape or form I still think it's their best album and I still love it so anyways now we'll get into the vitals here. So this album was released January the 12th, 1980. Uh, sorry, I wrote January 12th, but that's a mistake. It's January the 18th. As soon as I wrote it, I knew it was a mistake and I forgot to erase it. So it's January the 18th, 1980. NLS Studio in Quebec uh, 
or Lower Canada, which is what I like to call it. Uh, Marin Heights is where it was, uh, where the studio is located at. It's 36 minutes in length, roughly, on the Anthem record label and was produced by Terry Brown and Rush. Uh, to me, this is this is their best album for a reason. It, it reaches that encapsulate encapsulates sorry encapsulates encapsulates that sound that they were working on. All of that progressive stuff and the hard rock come together very well on this particular album. This is before they start moving off into the. Well, they they do have some keyboards on here. There's no doubt about it. Their synthesizers are already at work. But before they start making a vast detour into that, now some people would say that that occurred on Moving Pictures. Moving Pictures was an, a coming kind of an accumulation of everything they'd done up until that point, bringing in those three elements: progressive rock, hard rock, synthesizer-driven music, all brought together in a kind of that album in a kind of commercially acceptable way to the masses more acceptable than even this album which was kind of in that same vein um, but this album has just a little less of that and that's why I probably like it more so on this album you have six tracks which is at that point in time a fairly normal number of tracks for a Rush album um, starts out with the most famous song on the album A Spirit of Radio The Spirit of Radio played a lot on the rock radio stations uh, maybe next to Tom Sawyer, the most played Rush song on radio stations. Great song. I love it. I still love it. Um, unlike Tom Sawyer, that I do love as well, the, it hasn't burned out nearly as much. It's burned out, but not to the extent that Tom Sawyer is. Um, Free Will, this was a kind of track that got a little bit of negative flack from people who thought it was kind of an Ayn Rand thing. I don't think so. I think he was just expressing an opinion, and because he had already written 2112, people decided that this was connected to that in some fashion or another. But anyways, it's a great song. Lots of really good bass on this song. The vocals are fantastic. The lyrics are great. Um, I think this is a heavier Rush song. Just really good. It, for a while, it was my favorite track on the album. After Spirit of Radio kind of burned out a bit, it became my favorite track. Then you get to Jacob's Ladder, which is kind of a methodical song. Um, this album is very environmental to it. There's a lot of environmental stuff on this album, and this is one of those songs talking about um, the atmosphere and the clouds and how all that works, and he's kind of telling a story, and it's very melodical um, and heavy at the same time, and fairly lengthy, too. This is a seven-minute, almost seven-and-a-half-minute track really good I think it kind of encapsulates the album cover I think you know you've got this I don't know what that is in the middle I've never known what that part is in the middle it almost looks like something exploded there I'm not sure what that is maybe it's an asteroid hitting the planet or whatever I'm not sure what it is but you can see there's wreckage everywhere so um, yeah and it has that that style on the album cover is kind of that 50 style as well like but the girl the way she's dressed and the hairdo and just the overall feel and all these stuff down here kind of a kind of a got that 1950s feel to it you know at least the cover anyways um yeah one of my favorite album covers as well for them very a lot going on there on that cover and jacob's ladder another uh like i said really melodic kind of uh, bass driven song in some ways and Getty's voice is perfect on it as well then you get to Entree New which is more of a commercial sounding like Spirit of Radio but more commercial sounding lots of synthesizer on this um, catchy beat great, great lyrics and stuff but I don't think it I, I think the reason it hasn't stood the test of time I'm sorry I'm using that term again See, the only song on it really hasn't stood the test of time with me. It's because it just, it, it kind of was an impactual song initially and then just kind of faded and just never regained any kind of momentum for me. I never really got into it again. Um, but it, it's still, it's not a bad track. Um, different strings, always like this acoustic bit here. 
uh, by Alex, and you know you've got the um, you got Getty's wonderful vocals here. Just it's it's more of a subdued song, um, a little bit more. Um, I want to say it's more pastoral, but I don't think of Rush in any way as pastoral, so it's not really there. But it's it's in that frame of reference, I think. I have always liked the song. It's never burned out with me. I listen to it a lot. It's never been one of my top favorites on the album, but it's never been less than third or fourth on the album. It's always been kind of in the middle, but I always like to hear it, and I like to sing it. It's it's a great song. Um, the last track on here is probably my favorite now on the album, and it's been the longest that hasn't burned out. I still don't. I don't still find it burned out. I just. I love all of the synthesizer effects. I love Neil's drumming on this song. I love uh, the story that they're telling. Um, the acoustic parts by Alex Lifeson are great, and the electric stuff is even better. And it's just everything about this song is great. And I think this in this song more than any Rush um, song, at least these nine to ten, eleven minute songs, twelve minute songs in that period, in that kind of middle range. Um, Rush is the best at doing those, I think. That's my opinion. All of their, my favorite Rush songs are pretty much those ones that are in that, that kind of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 minute range. You know? And this one is uh, right in there with them. Definitely one of my favorites of, their, uh, of, those, uh, that, of that type of music. Maybe even my favorite of them. Um, at times, it battles it out with La Villa Serangiato or um, Xanadu at some points in time even um even the necromancer which is a little bit longer but yeah so really a really good track from rush um and still has really been strong with me over the years i still loved it when i play this album i love it when that song comes on so i've said a lot about this album and you know rightly so it's one of their best i didn't talk about the musicians on here though i usually do that after i give the initial information i just just sometimes forget that people don't know who's on here so this is three musicians getty lee on bass vocals keyboards and synthesizers and bass pedals bass tor torus bass torus pedals or whatever you want to call them then you got alex lifeson playing all the guitars six twelve strings acoustic electric uh, double necks if he I don't know if he actually plays that on this particular uh, album or not I don't recall seeing any live footage of him using it on this um, he plays all kinds of different styles on here including some reggae um, and of course he's also playing um, Taurus pedals here as well and yeah just really good and then you got the legendary of course Neil Peart on drums percussion and all things percussion uh, all kinds of different stuff, noises, um, yeah. And he writes all the lyrics, of course, too, where Getty and Alex do all the music writing. So, excellent album, released in 1980. Um, definitely not, definitely one of their better albums, for sure. It's, it's For me, it's my number one, but for you, it might be a little less, but some people like Moving Pictures more, some may like Hemispheres more, 2112, these are all albums that get a lot of play by them but this is my personal favorite so i hope you've enjoyed this video of rush's moving pe uh, permanent waves sorry <laughs> getting my rush mixed up uh please hit the uh like and um, subscription buttons and if you have any comments about the album please put them in the comment section below and hit the notification bell so you won't miss it and we'll be back next Monday night on Look Back at the Classic Rock Album. And we'll see you then. Take care. Bye.